Gym. Proud sponsors of UCMMA. Welcome to tonight's edition of the podcast. Now, we've done a little bit of a rush job. Again, we're flat off our feet. We're, it's manic out here. We're trying to do the shows. We're doing WCMMA. It's only next week. That's how quick it is. So we're just running around, fight as this, fight as that. It's all bish, bash, bosh. But we've got big news. News for you, the viewer. And if you're on the phone, if you listen up to his word, we have got exclusive interview with our good old mate who hasn't been on the scene for a very long time. The one, the only, Carlos Famoli. Yes, the UFC guy, very unlucky. You know, he had some really hard fights. But let's talk to him. And let's pray to God we talk to him and see what's going on in, Car in the Carlos world. There you go. The Carlos world failed. But we'll have another go because that's what we are. In there. Let's see if he's let's see if he's online. Hello, mate. Hello, is that Carlos Vermola? Yes, mate. You're right. Yes, I am, sir. Carlos Vermola, you're on, you're live on the podcast. Well done, my son. Now, Carlos, you've you've had you know you come to UCMA before. You smashed it up in the heavyweight division, and now you're down in the middleweight division. What's that like? Jumping from such a huge guy that you were going down the middleweight. Well, uh, I just uh, just wanted to get a little bit fitter than I was, and uh, I keep the, as much power as I had in the heavyweight. So basically, I'm uh, I'm fit, strong middleweight. So it worked out better for me. So it's even better for you as well. I mean, you've had some unlucky fights in the UFC. You managed to get to the cream of the crop, but you've had some really unlucky fights. What went wrong? Do you reckon? Oh, well, it, it happen happen in this game. Sometimes uh, sometimes you're unlucky and. Uh, yeah, the, the, the UFC is at uh, is, is the top of the world. If you do have one mistake, you, you're paying for it. And yeah. that, that's what basically happened, yeah. I just want to ask you as a fighter, because a lot of fighters said they feel the same. Like, the pressure that is on you, it's not you're just not having a fight anymore. It's like your job's on the line. You're, everything's on the line because they're so brutal at the moment where they're cutting fighters, one loss, two loss, boom, and you're out. Is that play a major part? It must play a big part in the game. Yeah, it is. It, 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 it's, not, it, it's not just a fight anymore. There, there's everything else. There's a millions of people watching you live on the TV yeah. and and all the pressure. You've got 25,000 people sitting in the arena. It's, it's, just a, it's just a different game. It, it turns into something else. Yeah. The pressure is massive. The pressure is unbelievable. I mean, you was always a nervous guy. Even when, I, even when you were smashing people up in CFC and in UCMA, you was always nervous anyway. So I can't imagine what it's like to go to Brazil in their hometown, and I heard a lot of people come back with John Maguire's camp, and uh, sorry, not John Maguire's camp, a lot of guys who was fighting out there said it was so hot, it was like walking into a sauna, is that right? It was unbelievable, yeah, it, that, 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 was, that was a big part of it as well. I was both ready for this fight, and, and uh, it was the first arena when we turned up, and it, 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 was, it was full up, and there was a no air con in the arena, it was so hot, it, it, it was hard to just sit in a bar, not, not to fight. <laughs> And obviously these guys, they, they, they used to it over there. We didn't so. go there early enough to acclimatize the eye. And um, yeah, it was a big part of the, uh, uh, the humidity out, out there. It just takes it out of you. So. I remember in the gym, we used to go and tr uh, we trained out there with... Uh, uh, with the guys, uh, what's his name, Shown, uh, Shogun and all them guys, uh, Gene Silver. And every 15 minutes, we all take a break because you, you were just dripping with absolute sweat everywhere. So yeah, it does play a big part in it. And But again, Carlos, you're unlucky. But we got big news. Have we got big news or what? Well, I hope so. I hope <laughs> so you've got big news for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know we have. We've done the contracts for you. You're fighting for the middleweight title on UCMA on August the 3rd. Are you going to be excited about that fight, Dennis and Sutherland? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because I didn't, I, I didn't fall in front of home for about three or four years. I've been, I've been away in UFC a long time, so... So I'm looking forward to fight over here, and, uh, and it's, it's going to be a good night. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. It must be so nice to come back to London again and have your fans come and watch you, your family, 
and no pressure because you're fighting for a title, but win or lose, you'll be back again fighting. There's no pressure on you now. You've been to the top. All you can do is climb back up and, and try and get there again. But at least this fight, it should be no pressure on you. You know, you should be going in there having a proper tear up like the old days. Yeah, that's it. That's what it's going to be. You're going to have a lot of, as you said, lots of supporters there. And it's going to be great. They're going to go there and, uh, yeah. Get my belt. I like that. Dennison's got a lot to say about that, but get my belt. He reckons it's his belt. But uh, I'll try and get Dennison on the line later on. Carlos, he's no, been absolutely... It, it, it was his belt for, for, for the time that, that I was away. Obviously, now I'm back, so uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm coming for my belt, yeah. You're going to destroy some divisions over here. Carlos, you're absolutely a monster. I can't wait to see your wrestling skills again. And uh, we'll see you on August the 3rd. No, I can't wait. I can't wait. I no problem. You... Joke on. I love you. Car Car Carlos Famola, people. You see, exclusive news. Once it may be a short podcast. He's jumped on. It may be a short podcast, but it's exclusive podcast. We've got Brett. It's go time, Freeman. Brett, how you doing, Mr. Hollywood? Hey, Dave, I'm good. How are you? Right, I've got some big news to tell you that you don't know about yet, unless Denison... Have you spoken with Denison over the weekend? I've not, no. Right. Denison Sutherland is fighting August the 3rd, and he's fighting Carlos Fomola. Outstanding. <laughs> oh, <what a> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to... Denison knows it's going to be a tough one for him, but it, it, nothing's... I had him on the phone earlier. Nothing seems to phase the guy, does it? I'll tell you what, he, he's, he just keeps coming and coming and coming, and, and Dave, I don't know how you do it. You just keep putting these fights together, and every event is better than the last. So, well, oh, man, I'm excited. I can't wait. Well, Brett, I'm a fucking master. That's what, that's what I do. You are. That's what I do. <laughs> Absolutely. I've only been You're doing it. Right? I, I think this is 92 events it'll be by then. It's getting on my nerves. It's getting on my nerves. I want to be a baker. But, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Denison, we spoke about it before. You know, he took Tom Kong to the decision, which was a very close fight. It, it was like, you know... A knife's edge of who could have won that fight. The different paths of fighters that that could have been Denison, maybe in the UFC, could have been Tom. One, they're always one fight away from either making it or not. And this Absolutely. could be an, this could be another turning point for him. You know, if he beats Carlos. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, he, Denison is. I mean, he's a freight train. He just he just keeps coming and coming and coming. And you know, I've trained with a lot of guys, but he's just he's hard as nails. So. Um, I think it's going to be a fantastic fight. I, I think it's going to be a long night for both guys, if I'm honest. But, uh, <laughs> boy, I can't wait to watch that one. Yeah, I mean, Carl's got a lot to prove. Well, no, he has. I spoke to him. He was under so much pressure in the UFC. You know, you, you lose one fight, two fight, they cut you. It's one of them. But now he feels under like no pressure. He's come back to London. He's fighting in front of his fans. But at least he's got a fight with no pressure. I mean, that must... Because he suffers from nerves as well. And, uh, sure, well... I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Denison will give him a nice welcome back to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> anything you're going on in the Brett Freeman world? Anything going on in the Brett Freeman world? You know, I'm just I'm looking forward to UCMA. I, you know, it's, it's one of the best shows I do. I really, really have a good night every time I'm there. Um, so, yeah, so other than that, you know, wife and I, we've just moved into a new house, so we've been busy, busy, busy. Yeah, I've heard, I've, I've heard, I've heard, I've, I've heard, I've heard. I've heard. Kind of <laughs> all the big drives and all that, man. You lucky man, you. Yes, yeah. indeed. It's time! <laughs> Hang on, I can say my podcast. It's time! <laughs> Brett Freeman, you're a Hollywood star. We'll see you next time. See you in August the 3rd, mate. <laughs> we have on the line the other opponent who's taking on the one, the only Carlos. It is the middleweight champion, Denison Sutherland. Denison, how are you feeling, my son? Yeah, I'm not bad, man. How you doing? No, <laughs> you are the most chilled out fighter. Every time I get on the phone, you're like, yeah, Dave, give me some more tickets. Yeah, Dave, look, yeah, he's going fine. Is it? Is it an age thing? You've been it, seen it, done it, and you've worn all the T-shirts, and now you just chill out, fight whenever you can. Is that what it's like? No, no, I'm, I've always been like this, man. I'm fucking mental. What's, well, hang on. It's high time, it's high time. <laughs> it's not, it's not. Have you, in your younger days, are you saying to me you had too much of a homegrown? Is that what you're saying? No, I, I think I've seen a lot of stuff, you know, when I was growing up. A lot of, a lot of really bad stuff. And um, then I came to the 
the UK and it just there's nothing to fear over here. There's no, nothing oh, to push me the way I was pushed back home. Well, I don't know. You, so, were, but, I was brought up in Peckham, mate. You, you want to live around there for a couple of years? It'll soon, it'll soon liven you right up. Well, uh, <laughs> I moved up straight to Harvard when I came to the UK. Straight to Harvard, and, and I heard all the tough these guys are. And some of the guys that I saw up here acting all hard were guys that I used to kick in the butt back home, you know. So, <laughs> well, it, and, it, it don't seem it don't seem that rough to me. So it. it, it so yeah, nothing, so what you say, nothing phases you. So you fighting Carlos for Mola, who's been in the UFC for a lifetime, it won't phase you at all, no? No, no, it's just another fight, man. Don't get me wrong, Carlos is a tough dude. <laughs> you know, I've sparred with him before. Really? I never knew I that. I did a fight. You've sparred okay. with Carlos? You've sparred with him? Yeah, I sparred with him. He was getting ready for a fight. Um, he didn't actually fight that time because he, he got injured. But, um, yeah, I sparred with him. He came over to my gym and sparred him. Well, how did you handle um, with his yeah. how did you handle with his um, wrestling? Because yeah. his wrestling's really he, good. He, he, he was all over me because um, unfortunately I, I don't spar like that. When I spar, it's more about learning, learning. learning. Yeah, different. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, you're different so, fighters. When I spar, I'm not trying to beat anybody up. It's, it's more about seeing scoring some points, seeing how I can get in without getting hit, or you know trying something new. So that, so that but, way, um, you're a gentleman. You're, you're like Neil Grove. He's yeah, you're like. Yeah, you're like Neil Grove, he said the same thing. He said, look, I go in at 50%, I just want to learn, want to learn my movement, my timing. He went, but some people come in and take your head off. He went, they think they're beating me yeah. up. But he went, and they're not. He went, you know, because I'm only going 50%. No, it's not, it's, that's not how you spar, man. Sparring should be, how on, it should be fun. It should yeah. be about the learning. Yeah. You know, um, if you're going to fight every day in the gym, <laughs> You're not going to last very long in the sport, you know? Well, I was going to say to you, that's why so many of these fighters get injured. And you just said it a minute ago, he ended up not fighting because he was injured. So that may be the key. Yeah, yeah. That may, you know, it's obviously you've got to train hard. But I know you train hard. You've been through so many free, uh, free five-minute rounds. It's not as if you don't train hard. People go, oh, they're not training hard enough. You've been there time and time again. You've, you took the distance with Tom Kong, which a lot of people said you should have won that fight. You know, so you've been with the best of them. So, as you say, it can't phase you, can it? No, it doesn't phase me, man. Fight night, my mind switches, I go to fight more. Even my friends don't like hanging around me that night. <laughs> you, you turn a bit nasty, oh. you turn a bit deep, yeah? Yeah, you, you know what? It's fight time. Anything can happen in the cage, you know this. Well, um, So you can't leave anything to chance. You have to go in there 100% focus on the moment. Well, he's saying, right. he's saying... Edison's kept my belt warm for me. Trust me, I'll be taking that belt home on August the third. What have you got to say? Uh, uh, listen, man, you can say whatever you want to say before the fight. When the kids door closes, that's the moment of truth. That's the moment of truth, Dennis the Sutherland. You are the middleweight champion. You are a legend. I love you. We'll see you on August the third. I love you. Anything? Anybody want to say thank you to? Listen, just thanks to all my team, man. Uh, there's too many to name. What it's all about. Denison Sutherland. God love him. And Carlos Vermona. That's going to be a war. August for Denison, jog on. We'll see you soon. Take care, buddy. Take care, buddy. Wow. Denison Sutherland, a true gentleman. Guys, it's just monumental. Before we go, let's have a look at July the 6th promo. Usa. I am Jim. Proud sponsors of WCMMA. Warrior, will you go the distance? Have you got what it takes? Will you burn in a sauna just to make the weight? I see it in his eyes. He don't want none of this. I train like an animal, bro. Bang! I switch you up quick. And I ain't into scoring points. I come for the KO. Put a real show on for the people so they talk about it tomorrow. Become a legend. Where they're born. In the middle of the ring, you can run your mouth or get it on. This is showtime, I hear the crowd scream, hear the bell ring, yeah this is my time, you know it's on now, it's on they now. wanna tear up, so I come swinging, I'm a warrior, 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 yeah I'm a warrior, 